Good evening as friends welcome to the Hindu news analysis by Shankar AS Academy for the date 10th of June 2022 these are the list of news articles we will be discussing today now let's get into the discussion look at this news article this news article talks about Trikokarnam Ranganayaki Ammal who was a well known mridangam artist in this context let us learn about Trikokarnam Ranganayaki Ammal and we will also learn about two percussion instruments that is mridangam and tabal si percussion instruments include any instrument that makes a sound when it is hit like drums shaken like maracas and scraped like xylophone now let us start the discussion si trikokarnam ranganayaki ammal participated in the all india music conference held in 1927 in madras she was only 17 years old then note that she was the only woman among the 23 mridangam artist who performed at the event so ranganayaki ammal is considered as the first woman to have made it big in the male dominated field of carnatic percussion instruments in 1966 she joined the padmavati college in tirupati as faculty and later worked at the satguru sangeetha samajam in madurai she was more interested in teaching than performing Apart from Mridangam she also taught Bharatanatyam. She conducted Arangetram for many of her students including Caroline a student from abroad. The author of this article is worried that it is unfortunate to not have any recording of her playing. This is about Trikokarnam Ranganayaki Ammal. See in prelims we can expect a pair based question in which UPSC might ask us to match musical instruments and their experts. So take note of this. With this in this discussion let us also discuss about percussion instruments mridangam and tabal first let us take mridangam mridangam is a percussion instrument made of leather and jack wood jack wood is nothing but the wood made from jack fruit tree this traditional instrument is found in various parts of south india it is a popular bifacial drum of carnatic music and it is used in south indian classical music Here bifacial means two sides of the drum can be used to make sound. Mridangam consists of a cylindrical body tapered at both the ends. Layered parchments are fastened to leather hoops and kept intact and tied by leather braces. At times small pieces of wood are also put in between these braces to facilitate tuning the instrument. If you notice one face of mridangam is larger than the other. The larger face is called toppai. The larger face when struck makes bass noise. The smaller face is called valanthalai. The smaller face when struck makes high pitched noise. Look here, you can notice a black spot, right? The goat skin covering the smaller face has a black disc made of rice flour, ferric oxide powder and starch at its center. This black tuning paste is also known as satam. This black disc gives the mridangam its distinctive metallic timbre. Note here that while playing the instrument the mridangam artist has his right hand over the smaller face and his left hand over the larger face. And before the instrument is played very fine flour powder is applied on the left face. Okay? This is all regarding mridangam. Now coming to tabal. See so tabal is also a percussion instrument. It is also made up of jack wood bamboo and parchment while mridangam is used in carnatic music tabal is majorly used in folk and traditional music it is particularly used in instrumental ensemble called periyamelam it is mostly used along with nagaswaram which is a double reed music instrument compared to mridangam the barrel used in tabal is larger both the faces of the instrument are almost of the same diameter Here also both openings are covered by layered skin and tied over the rim with the help of bamboo hoops and braces. The next main difference between tabal and mridangam is that while mridangam is played only by hands on the both sides, tabal is played by hand and a stick. The right face is played by the right hand, wrist and fingers and the left face is struck with the stick held in his left hand. Occasionally the player wears thumb caps on all the fingers of the right hand that's all regarding the south indian folk instrument tabal with this let us conclude this discussion in this discussion we saw some points about trikokarnam ranganayaki ammal then we saw about percussion instruments tabal and mridangam with this let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article look at this news article 
this news article states that the court used its extraordinary power under article 142 to release a man convicted of attempt to murder the court released him because he married the victim's sister the top court noted that all the people involved were living in the same locality the parties involved had approached the court to set aside the conviction in order to bring peace and in order to live cordially in another case a man was convicted under the protection of children from sexual offences act for raping his minor niece he had later married her taking notes that the custom of avanculate marriages existed in tamil nadu the court set aside his conviction the court said it did not want to disturb their marriage and happy family life so in both these cases the supreme court have placed the domestic stability over the punishment this raised the question of whether tying a knot is a way to untangle even grievous cases so this is about the news article in this context let us learn about article 142 and avanculate marriage first let us take article 142 look at this image here this is the exact text from the indian constitution regarding article 142 just go through it so what does article 142 actually mean see article 142 provides a unique power to the supreme court to do complete justice between the parties this power is used when a law or statute cannot provide a remedy essentially this provision of the constitution gives the country's top court wide powers to do complete justice in a case now we will understand this with a example see in 2019 judgment in the ayodhya case the supreme court made detailed references to article 142 it said that while the power under article 142 is not limitless the constitution authorizes the court to pass orders to secure complete justice it said that Article 142 embodies both the notion of justice, equity and good conscience as well as a supplementary power to the court to effect complete justice. So, the court used the extraordinary powers under this provision to grant 5 acres of land in Ayodhya situated outside the disputed area to Muslim parties saying that it was invoking Article 142 to ensure that a wrong committed must be remedied. If you have carefully listened to our daily news analysis you should have known that last month the supreme court used this powers under article 142 to release Perari Balan who is a convict of Rajiv Gandhi assassination this is about article 142 and some examples in which the supreme court used this article to provide complete justice now let us see about avanculate marriages we are we discussing this now it is because we have seen that a convicted man under pocso act for raping his minor niece was released by the supreme court because he had married her this accounts to avanculate marriage see it is a marriage between a parent sibling or with one's sibling's child that is it is a marriage between an uncle or aunt and their niece or nephew avanculate marriages are common among south indians currently it is mostly practiced in rural and small to medium cities in south india the most common form is where the elder daughter is married away to the youngest maternal uncle this wedding is usually called maman kalyanam or thai maman kalyanam in tamil nadu it was culturally preferred for at least one daughter to be married to an uncle This is extensively featured as a plot device in many Tamil movies such as Thamra Bharadi and Thai Maman. That's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw about the various examples where Supreme Court used Article 142 to provide complete justice. Then we saw about Article 142. Then we also discussed about avanculate marriages which is performed in South India. That's all regarding this discussion. With this, let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article. Look at this news article. This news article talks about an organization named Abai. Abai meaning Association of Bharatanatyam Artists of India. This organization is a news because it has turned 35 years this year. So, let us take this as an opportunity and learn about Bharatanatyam in film's perspective. See, Bharatanatyam is the oldest among all classical dance forms. It derives its name from Bharatamuni and Natyam. Natyam meaning dance in Tamil. 
See the origins of the dance can be traced back to Sadir. The solo dance performance of temple dancers or Devadasis in Tamil Nadu. So it is also referred to as Dasi Atam. With the decline of Devadasi system, the art too became nearly extinct. Later, the efforts of E. Krishna Iyer, who is a prominent freedom fighter, revived this dance form. Previously, it was performed by solo female dancers. Later, this dance form gained popularity among male and group artists as well. Rukmini Devi Arundel, another well-known proponent of Bharatanatyam, is noted for bringing the dance to the attention of the world. The present day format of Bharatanatyam recital as well as a valuable part of its musical composition were created by the famed Tanjavur Quartet of 19th century. They are the brothers Punnaya, Chinnaya, Sivanandam and Vadivelu. Under them Bharatanatyam also came to be known as Tanjavur Natyam. The Tanjavur Quartet defined the elements of Bharatanatyam recital. First is Arlipu. It is an invocatory piece of performance which includes basic dance posture and it is accompanied by rhythmic syllables. It is meant to seek the blessings of the gods. The next is Chattishwaram. It is a Nirata component and it is devoid of expressions. It includes the different poses and movements. Here Nirata means pure dance, a representation of rhythm through graceful movement of the body. The third is Sahabdam. It is the dramatic element with expressed words which includes the Abhinaya in the song. The meaning of the lyrics of the song that the dancer performs is conveyed to the audience with the help of hand gestures, facial expression called Abhinaya. It is generally in praise of the glory of the God. The fourth is Varnam. It is the Niratya component. That is, it is the combination of dance and emotions and it is most important part of the whole performance. It is synchronized with the Thala and Raga to express the story. Next is the Padam. It refers to a mastery over Abhinaya that is expression of the spiritual message by the artist. Music becomes light, dance becomes emotional in this part. The next is Jawali. These are short love lyrics performed at a faster tempo. Finally there is Tillana. Tilala is the concluding stage of the performance and comprises pure dance with exuberant movement and intricate rhythmic variations. See these are the components of Bharatanatyam. Bharatanatyam is often termed as fire dance as it is a manifestation of fire in the human body. Most of the movements in Bharatanatyam resemble to that of a dancing flame. In this dance form equal emphasis is given on both the Tandava and Lasya aspects of the dance with major emphasis on mudras. One of the principal mudras is the Kattaka Mukha Hasta in which three fingers are joined to symbolize Om. In a Bharatanatyam recital, the knees are mostly bent and the weight is equally distributed across both the feet. It is also characterized by the Yaksharya Lasyam style. That's all regarding this discussion. See, in this discussion, we covered Bharatanatyam in a prelims perspective angle. Okay, with this, let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article. Look at this news article given here. This news article is talking about the septic tank cleaning robot. See, this is to be deployed across the state of Tamil Nadu soon. And also note that the IIT Madras researchers will also train sanitation workers to use it. This is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let us discuss about the robot HomoSep given in the article. And then we will discuss about the robots Bandicoot and Sepoy. See, manual scavenging is defined as removal of human excrement from public street and uh, dry latrine, cleaning septic tanks, gutters and sewers. Now just have a look at these images to know how cruel it is to do manual scavenging. So, certain technological developments are being done to stop this manual scavenging completely. Now let us see three such technological developments. Okay. Firstly, let us take the HomoSep robot. It was developed by IIT Madras researchers to help clean septic tanks. It is a robot to eliminate the practice of manual scavenging in India. It is all set for field deployment. See, HomoSep stands for Homogenizer of Septic Tanks. Look at this image here. It has a shaft attached to blades. These blades can open like an inverted umbrella when introduced into a septic tank. This is helpful as the opening of the septic tanks are small and the tank interiors are big. Okay, 
the sludge inside that septic tank contains fecal matter that are thickened like hard clay and settled at the bottom right this needs to be shredded and homogenized so that it can be sucked out and the septic tank can be cleaned the whirling blades of the robot can achieve this precisely this is about homo sep now let us take bandicoots see bandicoot is a robotic machine that is engineered for cleaning any types of sewer manholes the robot consists of two major units a stand unit and a robotic drone unit it is the drone unit which will dive into the manholes for cleaning operations or unblocking operations the diving depth of the robotic drone is customizable according to the maximum depth needed in addition to this nano coating enables the robot to perform this operation in any hazardous or corrosive sewagery environments effectively for a longer period now take the drone unit it is equipped with an extendable robotic arm which has 4 degrees of freedom this is to perform grabbing shoveling and unblocking actions inside the manhole to gain stability while performing these actions the robotic drones are designed with four expandable legs and note that with the help of integrated waste collection bucket the collected waste can lift out of the manhole this is about the robot bandicoot now let us take the last technological development that is sepoy sepoy is a robot which works with the help of a camera installed in it the operator can see the conditions of the septic tank on a screen outside while regulating the machine just have a look at this image the sepoy septic tank robot uses high velocity cutters this is to cut through the thick sludge in the septic tank the machine does not require high maintenance see the cleaning is proposed to be done in two phases In the first phase a mechanically operated and externally powered intrinsically safe cutter system is inserted this is to perform an initial homogenization or shredding operation in the second phase the robot is inserted after pumping out some of the contents and filling the tanks with water this is about the sepoy robot so that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw three technological developments to address the issue of manual scavenging we saw about homo sep bandicoot and sepoy okay that's all regarding this discussion with this let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article look at this news article here this news article talks about the meghalaya landslip see four people including three miners died in two different incidents of landslips this occurred in the garo hill region of meghalaya and according to local authorities at least 10 villages under the beta singh block have been affected So this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let us discuss about the landslides and its types, and then we will see what causes landslides. Okay? Now let's start our discussion. First, what is landslides? See, landslides are a natural phenomenon. Landslides involve rapid and perceptible movement of earth. The materials involved in landslips are relatively dry. The size and shape of the detached mass depends on three main conditions one is the nature of the discontinuities in the rock the second one is the degree of weathering and the third one is the steepness of slope see these are the three main conditions that determine the size and the shape of the landslide now let us see the types of landslides depending upon the type of the movement of materials several types are identified first let us take slump see slump is the slipping of one or several units of rock debris with a backward rotation see this backward rotation is with respect to the slope over which the movement takes place okay secondly let us take debris slide see debris slide is the rapid rolling or sliding of earth debris without backward rotation of mass okay thirdly let us take debris fall Debris fall is nearly a free fall of earth debris from a vertical or overhanging face. Fourthly, let us take rock slide. See, rock slide is the sliding of individual rock masses down bedding joints or fault surfaces. See, over steep slopes, rock sliding is very fast and destructive. See, there is one more type of landslide which is called as lahar. Lahar is the mud flow or debris flow that originates on the surface of a volcano. This is usually triggered by heavy rainfall eroding volcanic deposits or it can also be triggered by sudden melting of snow and ice due to heat from volcanic vents 
or the break out of water from glaciers crater lakes or lakes dammed by volcanic eruptions see these are the five different types of landslides now let us see the causes of landslides landslides are caused by various factors one of the main cause of landslide is heavy rain we have heard about landslides in kerala during monsoon right these landslides are triggered by heavy rains second major cause of landslide is deforestation see trees and plants keep the soil particles compact due to deforestation the mountain slopes lose the protection given by trees and plants because of which when rain occurs landslides might be triggered next landslide can also be caused by earthquakes as well for example in the himalayas earthquakes unstabilize the mountains which leads to landslides other than that volcanic eruptions in specific areas can also cause landslides landslides also often occur in mountain ranges while making roads and construction see construction of road involves moving and removing of large number of rocks right this can destabilize the slopes of the mountain which can result in landslides finally in specific regions of northeast india landslides occur because of shifting agriculture see these are the main causes of landslides that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw what is landslides the types of landslides and the causes of landslides with this let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article now let us take up this editorial article for our next discussion see this editorial article talks about iranian foreign ministers visit to india this week this visit has many implications for bilateral relations between india and iran so we will see them one by one in this discussion but before getting into the discussion the syllabus regarding this discussion is highlighted here you can go through it now let us see some of the significance of the iranian foreign ministers first visit to india this week firstly as you know iran is a member of the 57 member organization for islamic cooperation this first visit is an opportunity for india to project that it has successfully allied the islamic world see recently there has been lot of speculation arising due to comments given by ruling party bjp's spokesperson on prophet mohammed and islam india's other foreign engagement have been overshadowed by this dispute ruling party has taken steps against this spokesperson so iran's foreign minister's visit might provide an opportunity for india to represent that india has successfully mitigated this issue with the islamic world secondly see the iranian visit comes a week after the visit of israeli defense minister so iranian visit might be challenging task for india which always seeks to run a balance in ties between iran and israel apart from this the meeting also coincides with the meeting of the board of governors of the international atomic energy agency we know that international atomic energy agency has passed sanctions against iran for its nuclear program so by hosting iranian foreign minister india can show its support to iran so through this india is balancing its relationship between iran and israel apart from this india and iran have also explored further operationalizing the chabahar port see chabahar port is the port through which indian goods were supplied to afghanistan before the kapul government fell and taliban took over to understand the significance of this port first let us have a brief understanding about this port see iran's chabahar is located on the gulf of oman and is the only oceanic port of the country see chabahar has two ports one is shahid kalantari and shahid behshti the port gives access to iran's oil resources and through this port india can bypass pakistan in transporting goods to afghanistan apart from this chabahar port will be beneficial to india in countering chinese presence in the arabian sea which china is trying to ensure by helping pakistan develop the gwadar port see gwadar port which is in pakistan is less than 400 kilometers from chabahar by road and 100 km by sea you can see both the ports lying nearby in this image given here chabahar port will also boost india's access to iran which is the key gateway to the international north south transport corridor here you must know about international north south transport corridor 
சி இட் இஸ் அ மல்டி மோடல் டிரான்ஸ்போர்டேஷன் ரூட் தட் கனெக்ட்ஸ் த இண்டியன் ஓஷன் அண்ட் த பர்ஷன் கல்ஃப் டு த கேஸ்பியன் சி த்ரூ ஈரான் அண்ட் தென் டு நார்தன் யூரோப் த்ரூ செயின்ட் பீட்டர்ஸ்பர்க் விச் இஸ் இன் ரஷ்யா ஹியர் யூ மஸ்ட் நோட் த வேர்ட் மல்டி மோடல் ஹியர் மல்டி மோடல் மீன்ஸ் இட் இஸ் அ நெட்ஒர்க் ஆஃப் ஷிப் ரயில் அண்ட் ரோட் ரூட்ஸ் ஃபார் மூவிங் ஃப்ரைட் பிட்வீன் இந்தியா ஈரான் ஆப்கானிஸ்தான் அசர்பைஜான் ரஷ்யா சென்ட்ரல் ஏஷியா அண்ட் யூரோப் In this image, you can see the stranded route in blue color and the International North-South Transport Corridor route in the red color. The International North-South Transport Corridor envisages movement of goods from Mumbai, which is in India, to Bandar Abbas, which is in Iran by sea. And from Bandar Abbas to Bandar-e-Anzali, which is an Iranian port in Caspian Sea by road. And then from Bandar-e-Anzali to Bandar-e-Anzali. Astrakhan a Caspian Sea port which is in the Russian Federation by ship across the Caspian Sea and thereafter from Astrakhan to other regions of Russian Federation and further into Europe by Russian railways so the international north south transport corridor is nothing but a 7200 km long multimodal transportation network encompassing sea road and rail routes to offer the shortest route of connectivity now coming back to the article through this visit india must have an additional advantage of having talks about afghanistan under taliban and further operationalizing the chabahar port finally amid the backdrop of russia's war in ukraine and western sanction iran has been eager to persuade india to resume crude oil purchases which india has halted in 2019 in response to threats of us penalties so this visit of iranian foreign minister might pave way for india and iran to have talks about resuming the crude oil purchase so to conclude india and iran have lot to do on the bilateral front with this let us conclude the news article discussion session and take up the practice prelims questions we have three practice prelims questions today let us see them one by one let us take up the first question trikokarnam ranganayaki ammal is closely associated with which of the following instruments mridangam violin veena nadaswaram see we have seen in the discussion that trikokarnam ranganayaki ammal was the only woman among the 23 mridangam artists who performed at the All India Music Conference held in 1927 in Madras also Ranganayake Amal is considered as the first woman to have made it big in the male dominated field of carnatic percussion so the correct answer here is option A mridangam now let us take up the second question this provision of the constitution gives the country stop court wide powers to do complete justice in the case this provision refers to option A article 142 option B Article 32, Option C, Article 143, Option D, Article 13. See, we have seen in our discussion that Article 143 gives the country's top court wide powers to do complete justice in a case. So, the correct answer here is Option A, Article 142. Here, the other articles, say like Article 32 deals with the right to constitutional remedies. Article 143 of the Constitution authorizes the President to seek opinion of the Supreme Court. and article 13 basically declares any law that is inconsistent with the fundamental rights of the people would be declared void this is about this question now let us take up the last question this is a two statement question two statements regarding bharatanatyam is given we have to find the correct answer this is a quiz question for you this is a very easy question if you know the answers post the answers in the comment section the main question based on today's discussion is displayed here write the answers and post them in the comment section If you like today's discussion like comment and share it with your friends for more updates regarding UPSC preparation subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel thank you